Welcome to The Edge. I'm joined by Steve Bittenbender, uh, my colleague at Gambling.com, gaming analyst, writer, covers uh, Gambling.com's state sites, the authoritative sur- uh, source on what's happening legislatively with the regulatory uh, process that, that, that the gaming industry goes through, but also as a Kentucky resident and longtime journalist who has covered the horse racing industry, really knows the Kentucky Derby and the industry Steve, I want to talk a little bit about the state of the industry, but before we do that, the 150th running, 50th run Saturday, betters are looking at at possible picks. Who do you like to win the Derby, and who do you see as a long shot? Well, my initial pick was going to be uh, Dornock, uh, and unfortunately, um, as a speed horse, he drew the inside rail, so that pretty much knocked him out for me, uh, as at least as my primary pick. So I'm looking now at uh, Forever Young. You know, um, I understand the knock about horses that uh, have come over uh, from the UAE Derby. Um, you know, they have not won. Um, I think it's been in 20, 20 tries now. Um, but, you know, the, the Japanese racing industry has invested a lot in it, in thoroughbreds of light. And... I really believe that Forever Young may be the real deal. He's got a prime position in the starting gate. He's right in the middle of the pack there. Uh, and I believe that, you know, he's going to be in very good position to take the race if it becomes available for him. You know, what I tell everyone about the Derby is it's basically just like a lottery. It, you know, imagine you've got 20 ping pong balls and you just throw them all out there. That's basically the derby. Yes, there are some, you know, obviously forever young, uh, fierceness. Um, you know, those horses are, you know, head and shoulders above a lot of the other horses in this race. But when you've got twenty horses coming together, you know, no horse has dealt with it. It's got, you know, no young horse has dealt with this. So there's going to be a lot of factors that come into play over the two minutes and change over the derby that really could open the door literally for anyone, as we saw just a couple of years ago with Rich Strike winning at uh, 81 to 1. So all that said, um, I am still going to stick with Forever Young as my pick um, uh, to to win it. Um, on sur- uh, As a surprise pick, you know, I, I came all this way with Doorknock. I, I, I feel kind of bad, even you know the, the lousy post-draw aside. Um, I still had to stick with him somehow. As a matter of fact, I think I might actually get a little extra value. He's going to have to come out strong and hopefully he doesn't uh, burn out his tank um, getting out um, to avoid the uh, pack crushing him on the rail there. Um, it, 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 it's it's unlikely, but again, this is the derby. Anything can happen. Uh, another horse I like is Catching Freedom. It's a Brad Cox uh, trained horse. He's actually coming off a, a, a rather lengthy, um, you know, he has raced since March 23rd when he won the uh, Louisiana Derby. Came, uh, came from behind uh, to win, uh, had a nice stretch run there at fairgrounds. Again, the concern with horses that, you know, have to rally is, you know, it's one thing to rally when you're facing seven, eight, nine, or ten horses. It's a different animal altogether when you're facing 18, 19, or 20 horses. So, you know, lanes don't always open up for those horses. But again, if the right, you know, if if the uh, you know if the right windows open, uh, if he gets uh, if he gets off to a good start, um, you know, I, I think Brad Cox is due a Derby winner, a legit Derby winner. So, I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see him uh, up there. At, um, for the wire at the end. I'm with you on those picks, although I have to say it's going to be tough to get me off of fierceness. Now, you know, one Florida Derby, as you know, by 13 and a half links. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I mean, it, was awesome, it was awesome Florida Derby. But, yeah. you know, 17, he's, he's, he's post number 17. So as, as I understand, there's never been a winner out of that position. Correct. Right. There has never been a winner. But keep in mind also now, in the last few years, they've got a new gate now. So it used to be that you had, you know, the traditional 14 stall gates, and then they added the trailer to have the auxiliary gate. So 
those horses were further out. Yeah. Now they've got a new gate with all 20 stalls, you know, all together. So that 17 position isn't that far out. And as we've seen in other races, I mean, Big Brown, I, I, no, Big Brown won, uh, I believe, from far out. Rich Strike won, same from 20th. Um, so you can win from outside. And it wouldn't surprise me if Earsness does win outside. You know, I'm just not sure what the value is going to be there. Usually the Derby is a very good race to bet for value. I'm just not sure that Fierceness is going to have, you know, a good value. It's definitely someone I would play with exotics. Um, but, you know, to bet for win, I'm not exactly sure I'm there yet. Looking for a little more of a payout. And, and I'll leave the board. The thing about Fierceness, too, is he has been a little bit spotty. Super speed horse. Went outrun the whole the whole field. You know, none have gone a mile and a quarter. Hundred twenty thousand screaming, yelling people. Who knows? But yeah. one of his losses came on a sloppy track. Now, the last I checked, Steve, and tell me because you're there. The last I checked, the weather that that was that was a few hours ago. They were looking at scattered thunder showers, eighty degree humid day. So we'll have to see how the weather holds out and how muddy or sloppy the track could be. Exactly. And here's the thing that, you know, as, as a Louisville native my whole life, um, the one thing about the weather, it changes here every five minutes. So, you know, yes, you know, there's there's a 45% chance of scattered thunderstorms right now on Saturday. That could very easily go to 100% or very easily go to zero. So I'm ex- I would expect a fast track. Um, even if it does rain some, the groundskeepers there at Churchill Downs do a marvelous job with the track. It would have to rain, I think, an awful lot in an awful short time close to the race uh, or just rain consistently throughout the day, one of those two, um, for it to become an off track. Um, I don't, you know, I would not bank on that. Um, but again, you know, as I said before, this is the dirt. Anything can happen. So, you know, you might want to think about that. You know, keep that in the back of your mind. Maybe you'll look for a horse or two that uh, has ran well um, on the off track. Um, maybe someone who uh, ran um, on the uh, artificial surface, maybe a turfway or something uh, or another track. See how they did on on the uh, poly track um, as a possible indicator. But, um, you know, there's no questioning how, how good fierceness is as a racehorse. And he's definitely, I think, in the running for horse of the year, whether or not he wins the Derby, um, depending upon obviously what he does for the rest of the uh, rest of the campaign. But you know, I, I'm just, I, I just think that you know he's going to probably be bet down to like a a three to one or four to one position. And while that is very good odds for a favorite in a twenty horse field, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure you really get the value there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on Doorknock. I mean, he is the only horse to have beaten Sierra Leone, who's another favorite. So I, I'm with you. He's keeping an eye on that number one post position. It's always difficult, always a challenge in the fifth post position. Catholic fifth, the fifth position's always done well. And as you say, with 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 the uh, structure of the gate, and thank you for that tidbit, by the way. That's valuable information. So who knows? It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Now, one horse that won't be there. And you've covered Bob Baffert. You've covered the state of the industry. Um, mm-hmm. Is Muth, which won the horse that won the Arkansas Derby? Uh, we'll see what happens. Freakness in Belmont. Belmont's going to be at Saratoga because of uh, right and so forth at the site. But yeah. you, you know, Steve, when you look at the state of the industry in the last few years, you know there was a uh, there were a lot of horse deaths out in Santa Anita and, and elsewhere, and at Churchill. Uh, yes. He's been in some problem. I think he has a has a has an exclusion from nothing at Churchill through twenty four. Churchill, mm-hmm. what? Not so. So the public really pays attention beyond big betters for the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown. What's going on? With the state of the industry. It's taken some. The dog racing industry got uh, yeah. heavily in a slot because of because of some of those criticisms. What's going on with the <laughs> racing industry in general? And then what's going on with Bob Baffert going forward? Sure. Well, first off, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, state of the industry itself. I and mean, just last year, Churchill Downs was in the eye of the storm. 
even on Derby Day, there there were uh, some fatalities in the uh, in the races ahead of it. Uh, there was a, a Derby contender who was uh, put down um, because, during uh, during you know the um, Miami runs um, on, uh, you know for practice training, um, and it eventually forced Churchill Downs to shut down their uh, summer meet, spring and summer meet, and move it to Ellis Park so that they could just really take a look at the track, tear it down, rebuild it, see what uh, the problem was, and move on. You know, horse racing obviously has had a, a litany of problems, especially over the last five years, as you mentioned, Santa Anita. Um, you know, it started with that, um, and it, it really has kind of stayed, you know, in in the news um, because of some, of some of the fatalities. We've had also unfortunate incidents up at uh, Saratoga as well, um, in the last couple of years, um, with, with horses that have, uh, that have died there, you know, Heisa, the horse, um, the horse racing integrity and, and, and safety authority has done a good job of, of trying to get ahead of these things. And I think the tracks are doing a good job of, of trying to get ahead of these things in, in terms of being proactive and, and protect the horse, protect uh, the jockeys protect everyone involved in in the sport. There's some concern, I think, from from horsemen uh, about what exactly that means, um, what that would do to their livelihood. I know some trainers had expressed concerns about uh, some of the uh, potential penalties they may face uh, if a, a horse uh, has a uh, if a horse is test positive on. Uh, for uh, for a, a, a legal substance or um, a substance over the limit, uh, I think there's still obviously some work that needs to be done with it. Um, you're never going to have a completely hundred percent safe sport with horse racing. That's just not going to be the case. Um, as unfortunate as that is, what you can do though is you can work to make it as safe as possible for the horses, for the jockeys. Um, for everyone who's involved in the sport, and you know, look to mitigate those incidents to as few as possible. How, how do you do that? Is it an issue of of of, of the of the uh, drug issue, or is it overtraining young horses? How how do you stop having to put these horses down because of injury? I know that's a million dollar question, but what's the yeah. is it sort of a way to get on top of this? You know, I think part of the problem has become. Just the breeding itself, you know, there there are fewer horses now racing than than there were years ago, um, and as you get fewer horses racing and fewer horses, you know, it, um, in in into breeding, um, you know, that kind of dilutes the pool a little bit. Um, so you you don't have that diverse base that you had years and years ago. I, I think that has been an issue. Um, I do think that, you know, there, there probably needs to be some, uh, issues addressed with training. Um, I think, you know, tracks need to invest as much as they can to ensure the soundness of horses. I know, uh, some animal rights activists have, uh, you know, called for having image, uh, imaging machines, uh, at tracks so that, uh, horses can be examined to determine how sound they are. And if there's any concern about their soundness, you know, maybe hold them out for a time. Um, I know that would be, you know, somewhat expensive and probably cost prohibitive at some smaller tracks. But, you know, if the if if everyone in the sport can get involved in this to kind of mitigate that cost, I think, you know, it would help everybody in the long run. Um, and then and another issue, an issue that may or may not necessarily be related to the fatalities and the injuries, you know, horses do run, you know, run fewer races now than they did in the past. You know, you're seeing them only race now, you know, in some cases as few as, you know, five or six times in their career before they uh, before they um, go into stud. And, you know, that's, you know, while it seems kind of um, counterintuitive, you know, that's a lot of stress. You know, you're training a horse to, you know, be at his peak, you know, in his fourth, fifth, or sixth race, rather than, you know, previously he would have him out, you know, not just as a three-year-old, but possibly a four or five-year-old as well. And you could eventually build up to where he would be at peak performance. 
And you don't see that that much anymore. I mean, even a horse like Flightline, who raced as a four-year-old, um, that's now kind of an outlier in this industry. So, you know, I would like to see it to where horses are able to stay in in, in race, um, you know, not just as three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, you know, get let their names build up, you know, possibly have races where, you know, we do have, you know, two derby winners or, you know, two trip, you know, two uh, trip crown race winners facing off as four-year-olds and five-year-olds, not just in a Breeders' Cup, but maybe in another race in the summer at Saratoga or at Churchill Downs or Santa Anita or Del Mar. Uh, I think that would do wonders for the sport and, and help um, and help promote the sport to a lot larger audience. But that's not going to happen here in the next year or two. That's something that's going to have to take probably the next 10 years or so to get there to where the sport can, you know, get back on, you know, more solid ground and, you know, build itself up in the national uh, limelight. Speaking of, we only have a couple of minutes. I really appreciate you doing this. Speaking of Imogen and all that, Bob Baffert, Hall of Famer, clearly revered in the industry. But but the optics aren't good. Someone like that being suspended for a long time, allegations right. of, of drugging horses. Well, is he damaged goods? What happens to a guy like this? Bob Baffert, um, I wouldn't say he's damaged goods. I mean, he, you know, he does have a legacy. Um, it's very similar, though, obviously, to what happened in baseball with Mark McGuire and Sandy Sosa and Raquel Primaro and the like that, you know, you know, they, they were, they were the stars while they were, while they were playing. And then unfortunately the allegations kind of clouded over him. Um, you know, Bob Baffert still is, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest trainer of all time. Um, Churchill Downs was upset and, and, and rightly so for the, uh, for, for the drug test, um, the, the, the failed test that the Medina Spirit had. And I think they did take the right measure in suspending Baffert for two years. Um, now, Baffert, which, you know, he had his right within the state um, to appeal the the ruling that the that the uh, KHRC had. And, you know, that appeal played out. Played out. He lost that and, and served that. Now, that was separate from what Churchill Downs... Churchill Downs said for two years... You can't run at the track at Churchill Downs. You can't run in the Derby. Any horse you have in a Derby prep race, it, it won't count, um, and you won't be able to race at fairgrounds or any other track. Not not that he raced at those tracks, but it was a, it was a sweeping ban. It should have expired at the end of last year, which would have put him on pace to to race at Churchill Downs this year. Unfortunately, he kept pressing Churchill Downs. And Churchill Downs felt that it had no, you know, it had no other course but to extend that suspension another year. Baffert didn't like it. Um, his owners didn't like it. They tried once again, um, just in the last couple of weeks to get it overturned. That was unsuccessful. You know, at, at some point, you know, Churchill Churchill Downs does have to, I, I think, let it go. And I think the optics with this being the 150th Derby. Uh, I, I I feel that they didn't want Baffert to kind of overshadow that, uh, which is probably why they extended it beyond the two years. Uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, that this is the last year for it and that, you know, he can be welcome back to Louisville. I think that would be good for the sport um, and, uh, and, and good for the industry uh, uh, overall. Thank you, Steve. I really do appreciate it. Listen, you've made me rethink before I get onto my app or, or, or walk up to a ticket window, uh, re- rethink my choices. And and everyone go back before you fire up your betting app. Uh, take a look at what Steve is saying about his choices. Yeah, so horse, horse industry, horse racing industry, not dead, um, seems to be rebounding, seems to be that they've addressed some of the issues. Steve, I really do appreciate you putting all that into context. Anytime, Larry. Glad to be on. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much. I'm Larry Henry at gambling.com. Thank you for joining us on The Edge. 